Thanks for listening to Entre Nido, the show where we help you live the Nido life. By listening to Entre Nido, you'll learn how to develop multiple streams of income. You'll hear amazing stories and takeaways from professionals in their field. And you'll learn more about yourself and how you're wired. The average person spends 90,000 hours at work in their lifetime. Student loan debt is at an all-time high, and 41% of all divorce is based on finances. If you feel like you're surviving, but you wouldn't exactly say you're thriving, then you've come to the right place. Whatever stage of life you're in, Entre Nido is here to help you be a better entrepreneur. Break out of that rat race and start living your Nido life today. And now introducing your Nido host, Matt Neff. Hey guys, welcome back to Entre Nido. If the audio sounds a little different, it's because my family and I are at an Airbnb in the Smoky Mountains. So if you hear birds and wind and share lifts, that's what, that's what it is. On today's show though, we have a great interview with Brandon Voss from the Black Swan Group. Brandon is the thought leader at Black Swan regarding negotiator types. He has made it his mission to teach clients how to identify the basic types of negotiators and has developed a methodology for dealing with each type in the most successful way. For more info on Brandon's work and the Black Swan Group, text FBI Empathy in all caps, one word, to 28228. That's FBI Empathy, all caps, one word, to 28228. You can also check out their website at blackswanltd.com. That's blackswanltd.com. I also want to take a second to mention a great book I just finished called The Ideal Team Player by Patrick Lencioni. The Ideal Team Player presents a powerful framework and easy-to-use tools for identifying, hiring, and developing ideal team players in any kind of organization. Whether you're a leader striving to create a culture of teamwork, a human resource professional looking to hire real team players, or an employee wanting to make yourself an invaluable team member, this book will prove to be as practical as it is compelling. You can get Patrick's book for free by going to entreneeder.com and clicking the free book tab at the top of the screen. Thank you again for listening. If you're enjoying the show, please consider supporting us through our dollar challenge on Patreon or by leaving a written review on iTunes. Now on to the interview with Brandon Voss. Welcome back to Entre Nido. My guest today is Brandon Voss. Brandon is the Director of Training and Operations for the Black Swan Group. Brandon, welcome to the show. Hey, man. Thanks for having me on. I'm happy to be here. I'm just, yeah, this is cool to be a part of. I'm excited to uh, to talk more today about negotiations. We're almost, it seems like we're going through this like negotiating thing and you're going to be around people your whole life. The life moves at the speed of relationships. Everything you do matters. Voice inflection, posture, eye contact, all these different things. So a lot of our listeners, myself included, absolutely love you know your dad's book, Never Split the Difference. And uh, we have some show notes there for people to, to pick up a copy or two for for a friend, but I want to get into just before we get started with the, with the backstory and the topics today. I would love to hear more, just kind of uh, guest plugs, things things that we can promote. How can we help you? What can we promote for our website, social media, books, anything you'd like to share today? Uh, that's very kind of you asking, Matt. And and number one, you know, one of our great instructors, great a big part of the Black Swan team, Derek Gaunt, a former crisis negotiator with Alexandria, Virginia Police Department. He's been with us for a few years now, and he just came out with a book called Ego Authority Failure. And it really ties in the skill set that we discussed and never split the difference and applies it directly to leadership. Hmm. No matter where you're at in the spectrum of leadership, there's something in this book that can help you out. And it ties our tactical empathy approach right into it. He did a great job. He's been working on it for 10 months. And then, uh, you know, we're really happy with him. And, he, and it's, a, it's a solid book. That's awesome. Well, we'll definitely put links in the show notes as well to to promote that as well. That's that's great. And we're hoping to have Derek on here in the future. So looking forward to that. But yeah, man, I would just I'm just intrigued by your your upbringing, your backstory. Uh, what is it like to be the son of a, a hostage negotiator? Any info you want to share, man? I always love backstory. I love to hear kind of where people come from and how they get to the point they are now. We love to hear it. Well, you know, the the first thing was I got a chance to to see somebody that truly loved their job and worked really hard at it. And then, you know, kind of from my end, uh, one of the cool things about being the, the son of a guy like that is things that he couldn't necessarily talk about because he was restricted by his job and classified information and things of that nature. He could he could talk to his son about. So wow. you know, getting, getting to hear some of those those cool insider things as, as a really young kid is it was kind of fun. And so. But, yeah, he, he worked a lot. And, and so, uh, you know, getting to see the work ethic and then being in, in the environment, being around him enough, you know, you pick up certain things. And then now being older and, and in a, 
in my professional career, getting a chance to work with him like this is, you know, I'm, a, I'm in a lucky spot. You know, I get I get to learn from a from a good from a really good solid person who's picked things up from all over the world and you know apply that to to what I'm doing. That's super cool. How long have you been with the organization? So from day one, you know, kind of one of the cool things about it is, you know, the, it wasn't like we built this empire and you know he handed me the keys to the Rolls Royce, as it were. <laughs> you know, we got to go through those days of you know we got bills to pay, we got we got clients we have to close, we gotta we actually got to get the word out there. People got to understand and. You know, what's what's funny is early on, you know, being an FBI hostage negotiator, the reaction to it was, then what does that mean you can tell me about business? And a lot of that viewpoint changed after the book came out, which is really fun. But it's it's interesting, like, you know, being part of the business when that was actually a hindrance, you know, that putting that up front made people almost turn away. Like, OK, well, that that's wonderful. I'm glad you did that. You know, thank you for your service, that type of thing. What does that tell me about my business? And being able to survive in that type of environment when it was actually a hindrance to, to have that on the resume. Wow. That's, that is interesting though. Cause that probably does seem like, Oh, wow, these people are way too overqualified or they, you know, our, our business isn't as intense at that level of, of uh, stress as the negotiation tactics, but that is cool. It's kind of bridged the gap to be like, no, this is really how you can apply it to everyday life. Yeah. Yeah. That's been a, that's been a fun process and being, being a part of that. And also, you know, it's a, it's a great way to, to earn your bones as it were, you know, if it's, um, you know, it, if you're imagining it from the outside, it's impossible. Like how could someone think that, you know, a person that dealt with lives and dealt with that in types of intensity, couldn't just come into the boardroom and come into your business and, and teach you how to do it better. Like how could you possibly think those things don't translate? Hmm, yeah. And, you know, having to survive in that and, and then get to a place where now it's really shifted. You know, our momentum is is that we've picked up since the book is really is based on a lot of shifting that persona. So it, it's fun to see the transition. It's fun to be part of it. Yeah. And I think, too, it's like for people to miss that, it's like you're dealing with people all the time, though. So, you know, like kind of how I mentioned earlier is like eye contact, voice inflection, things like that. How you respond is like crucial. And if a person doesn't think that it's crucial, how they react, how they respond to things like you're totally missing the boat because that will make or break a business deal. I remember um, my wife and I, we were selling a house a couple months ago and uh, we had four realtors come in and all nice people, but the first realtor was so weird to me that I was like, I don't want this guy representing us in our house because I'm sure he's a great guy, but he's just weird. You know, like he, yeah. he was staring too long. His eyes were a little bit too open. I'm like, I don't think this guy's ever blinking. I'm like, he just, he just, he's made me nervous. He made me... Uh, just weirded out a little bit. And so we ended up going with actually the fourth person that we knew, the uh, the real estate investor there. She was comfortable and confident. She wasn't cocky. She was just real like, no, we can get this done. No no worries, things like that. She wasn't like powering up in this whole thing. And we went with her and she was a great organization. We sold our house in like less than 24 hours. And I always think wow. back to like, man, what what if we hired the the nice weird guy? You know, like would it still be... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just, but these are the things I think of. I'm like, it's all about relationships. It's all about how you talk to people. So, that is that is super interesting. Uh, kind of moving forward, uh, we were going to talk today about top three things to take into a negotiation, and there were some other topics that you threw at me too, which I'm like, uh, if we had time to, I'll, maybe we'll have you back on the show. I'd love to talk more about it. But for today, I would love to. I'd love to talk about that. I just just today did a negotiation. Was working with uh, one of our companies that we have, sitting down with a lady that's over HR for this big plant and this big company that works for this giant organization. And it was really fun to think about. Okay, things I've learned from the book. Make sure you're not talking too fast. Like good eye contact. Be comfortable. Be confident. Things like that. Little things that I've learned along the way that, like I said, with a realtor is, is going to make or break. So what are some things that you've seen? We'd love to hear more about that, the, the top three things to take into a negotiation. Yeah, very good. You know, it's interesting when, you, when you're talking about hiring your realtor and relationships and, and, you know, team member aspects. And, you know, we could even get into a whole, a whole spiel about how, how that plays in and, and getting good people to your team and how quickly you can get things done in a very short period of time. You know, it's crazy that you guys got all that worked out so quickly. So, mm -hmm. you know, that said, right, just putting that out there. But, you know, top three things taken into a negotiation. Um, number one, you know, your your personal bias in regards to I am normal, right? You, you go in, you think I'm normal. This person's probably normal. I'd like to be dealt with a certain way. So that's how I'm going to approach dealing with them. You know, treat others the way that I want to be treated. You know, that whole notion. Essentially, erasing that from your mind. 
Hmm. Right. That's that's got to be a top one. You know, chances are they don't approach the negotiation process the same way you do. And you can be very off putting by treating them like you because they're not wow. like you. Wow. And, we, you know, we talk about in the book, right, the different negotiator types and how that plays in. And that's one way to break down, you know, how people approach. But then when you start applying fairness and how fairness it affects people, depending on what side of the table they're on and all those all those elements that come into play, it's not actually possible for them to be like you. Hmm. So you got it. You got to let go of that. Number one. Second thing is uh, you know, proof of life concept. You know, we, we, we touch on it in the book and, you know, it comes from. You know, we see it in the movies, right? A man on fire and, and, and all these like negotiator movies. And it's essentially your security question logging into your bank, right? What, what street did you grow up on? You know, what was the name of your childhood pet? Mm-hmm. Things like that. And, and Chris and his team, when he was in the, in the bureau, they really changed how they approached that concept. And we've evolved it even more for the business sector. And it's, and it's really figuring out, you know, are you wasting your time? Or is there, is there a deal to be had here? Is there a way to sniff this out early on in the conversation? You know, it's not, it's not a sin to not get the deal at all. The sin is to take a long time to not get the deal. Hmm. So how do you keep yourself out of those situations? And it's this proof of life concept and being prepared to ask a question along those lines. And, it's, and it really has to do with an effective use of the word why. And then the, then the last thing is, is managing your last impression how you get off the phone or how you end the interaction. You know, at the very least, you want to put yourself in a place where they're happy to speak to you again. And even that said, you know, when, when my dad and I are on negotiations together, a lot of times our goal is, especially first time out, the entire goal is we're going to see, we're going to hear what they have to say. We're going to schedule another meeting. Hmm. And it's really focused on how do we end the conversation? How do we project or how do we, how do we push ourselves into the next interaction but also do it in a, in a very positive and amicable way. I mean, Broadway's had a, a saying for a long time, right? Uh, give them a big finish and they'll forgive you for anything. Mm, yeah. So that said, based on human nature, what people remember is the last impression, hmm. even more important than first impressions. So understanding how that plays into every interaction that you're involved in with your counterpart, managing the end of the interaction is always very important. So those are the top three things, you know, let go of the I am normal stuff. The other person's not like you. Number two, be ready to, to sniff out some sort of proof of life. It has to, has to do with the effective use of why. And then lastly, managing your last impression. What does that look like? How do we end this conversation well? Hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I've, I've heard of that. Like they'll remember, people won't remember what you said a lot of times, but they remember how you make them feel, things like yes. that. And I've, and I've never heard that as far as that's actually really helpful to, to end properly, to leave properly. Uh, in a sense, even before, if it's a little awkward, because I think a lot of times in, in interactions with people, it is a little stunted sometimes. Some people you can pick right up and you feel like you've known them for 10 years. And then other people just like, you know, when you're like at the mall or like an airport or somewhere and you see somebody coming and then you go left and they go right. And then you, you're you doing this like awkward dance. Uh, it's just, that's going to happen. But that's super helpful to think about. You have more control by the end because nerves have settled down a little bit. They've settled down. You settled down. You're kind of, okay, we're good. You know, we got this to to do that. So would you be willing to, to unpack like the first one? I'd just love to unpack these just a little bit more because there's so much to them. But as far as like when you said it for, for part one, you're not the same as them. So would you say part of it could be like, let's say you're, you're bidding a contract or something and you're meeting with an HR person or an operations person or a decision maker, essentially. It's just because of the, it's like a power play in the sense of like, in the sense they kind of have the power because let's say you're trying to, to, to earn them as a customer or a client or whatever it may be. But they're also representing, they know that like, hey, I'm at work right now. I'm on the clock. I'm on salary, whatever. This isn't like we're meeting at Buffalo Wild Wings talking business. Like it's, you know what I mean? Like the location, things like that. Does that make sense? It does. So I'm just curious, like, what does that look like as far as like, what are some other mindsets or things that you can have, like that you don't shrink, but then you don't power up and you just kind of know that, that like, I love this kind of stuff. Like the, the mindset I think is so crucial in how you walk into a situation. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the first thing, and we, we talked we talk this through, with, with, especially with our coaching clients, and, and when they come to the table, the other side has something to say. They always got something to say. If you come in and you lead with what you want to say, you're already off base. I mean, you're already on two different trains of thought because you're focused on what you want to say, and they're thinking, I got stuff to say, and they're not ready to hear me. You know, that's, that's a, that's a big part. I mean, if you just break it down to just simple data and justifications, 
mm-hmm. there's going to be misalignment on both sides or there wouldn't be a point of negotiation at all. Sure. Yeah. So Good just point. just based on that alone, you're in different places. So, you know, leading with the, with the idea, right, Stephen Covey, seek first to understand. We really talk about what it takes to accomplish that. And, and the first thing is understanding they don't want to be dealt with like you. They're not like you. They, they, they're they're going to be they're going to approach it different. And then once you can see that, once you know what to look for, right, again, the way that they're looking, the, their posture, right, all those different ways that a message is conveyed other than through content. Right. What are you looking for and how does that better inform you on what's the what's the best way to communicate with this person? Yeah. And kind of coming in knowing that. And I love that, too, because I think kind of speaking for myself, there's been times where I'm like almost like I would get so caught up into a product or service or something that we can provide and I get excited about it. And I literally am. I mean, it's it's cool and I'm passionate about the businesses and the company and all that. But I love what you're saying about it's got to be the other way around where you're listening more than you're talking and you're not geeking out on all like the technology side of it. And here's what we do. And here's this and that, like listening to them, because that's probably what they're used to getting all the time is people just like, here, here's my sales pitch. Let me just, here's all about us and all these other things instead of asking, okay, how can we help you? What are some pain points? What's some frustrations? And it's almost like a therapy session in the sense of like, talk to me to help me understand you better and, and your company better. Yeah, you know, that's that's a big part of it. It's interesting to think of it almost like a therapy session. But the idea is, how do I get them to think out loud in front of me? Right? What am I going to say that they're, they're so comfortable? And they they have they have such a will to help me understand that they're just thinking out loud in front of me, they're just thinking off the top of their head, you know, how, how do I create that environment within the interaction? Because mm-hmm. that means that's kind of a sign that they're comfortable, would you say? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. That's it's it's more powerful than than what we would call common ground. Okay, so number two, you talked about proof of life concept, and what's the importance of the proof of life concept? Can we unpack that just a little bit? Well, if you're in business, you, everyone's pretty much been through the the experience of I thought they were going to do business with us, or I thought they were going to buy from us. We got all those the indications of how much we love your product, right? And then we didn't do business. And there, there could be a number of reasons for that, but a, a leading cause, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, is that you played the fool in the game. And for all intents and purposes, there's always a favorite and there's always a fool. And there's even, there's a lot of data out there that talks about the buyer's journey. And, you know, for all intents and purposes, a person's mind could be up to 70% of the way made up before you've even made contact with them. So even by definition, that means that they're not an open-minded person. You know, for those of us that go into negotiation and think, ah, they're probably open-minded. Well, there's a lot of data out there that shows their mind is 70, is, is two-thirds of the way, right, made up before, the, before you've even talked to them the first time. Wow. So understanding that, first of all, understanding that that is in play, and then if you are the fool, chances are the best move is to allocate your time somewhere else. You could spend the next 10 months trying to become the favorite, but if their mind's made up and they're just weighing you against their current vendor, their current provider, right? You know, they're, they're just, they're collecting estimates, right? They're doing um, uh, requests for proposals from 30 different companies, right? If you're, if you're in that mix and you're not the favorite, you know, how, how much time are you losing in that process? And so the proof of life idea is designed to identify basically where you are. And, and so being prepared to ask that question. There's a number of different ways to ask it. You know, we talk about using calibrated questions and which are just simply what or how as we define them in the book and also an effective use of the word why. And so I'd love to get into that, but you got to come to one of our events and hear us talk about it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, this is the appetizer. I love it. <laughs> That's what we want. We want people to be checking this out and signing up for coaching and, and getting the book and, and buying everything. <laughs> BSG for sure. Black Swan Group. No, that's great. That's great. Uh, and then, and then the last one, uh, you know, managing your last impression, if you could touch on that would be, would be great. Yeah. I think oftentimes we focus so much on how we want to kick things off with someone that we forget how we're ending the interactions. That's so good. Yeah. And unfortunately in business, you know, a lot of people have been through that tough ending where phones are getting hung up or people are slamming their hands on the table. And when all those things are happening, they're happening in an emotion, highly emotional state, you know, that wasn't a plan. Things deteriorated to that point, And now that's the bitter taste that's left in everyone's mouth. Now, of course, that's an extreme example. 
But if you're trying to make sure that you're on the opposite end of the spectrum where it's like where they're walking away and they're like, look, we got to talk to our team right away because we got to get these guys back in the room just because of the way you ended it. You made a great point earlier, right? It's people don't actually remember what happened, but people remember how things made them feel. Right. Like a weird realtor that we had. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. That's a great example of it. I mean, because everybody's been probably been through that. If you've ever bought a house, you've been through probably <laughs> run into a, a realtor. that was like, I don't know about this person. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great example. So, but but understanding that and then playing it to your advantage, right? Playing the cards that you dealt. You know that last impressions are strong. Mm-hmm. They're they're more important than your first impression. And so, how do I play that game in my favor in every interaction that I have? So good. Well, we are almost at that time. Uh, this has been great today, but I want to get kind of final thought. What's what's one thing you'd want, want to leave us with for our listeners? For those of you that have read the book and those of you that, that are looking to pick it up, there's some things in there that are counterintuitive. You know, they're, they're tough to make yourself do. And it really boils down to just making a decision to change how you're approaching every interaction. And that's what I want to leave people with. Like, what is it going to take for you to make that decision to change how I'm making the interaction. It doesn't mean you're changing everything that you do, but those little things that you you add in to up your batting percentage, so to speak. Sure. Right. What when you you know what what make that decision to to add those things to your repertoire. Well, we are at that time, but uh, one more time, Brandon, if you could just promote away anything you want to share and promote from uh, Black Swan Group. Sure. So we got a we have a, a blog, a free newsletter that comes out every week. Comes out on Tuesdays at about hits your inbox about nine a.m. your local time. You can sign up, sign up for it on our website. Uh, Matt will probably, Matt, I'm sure Matt will have it in the in the link for you. Yep, I have a link available. But if you also want to sign up through text, you can. Uh, if you text the word FBI Empathy, so it's it's actually all one word: FBI Empathy, all capital letters, no spaces, to two eight two two eight. That's FBI Empathy, all caps, one word, two eight two two eight is the is the number you text. You can sign up on your phone through our weekly newsletter and, and that'll hit your inbox. And it's a great way to stay in touch with what we're doing and what cities we're going to be doing live events in. And, you know, we got several products coming out this year, virtual, you know, self-guided things. And it's a great way to keep up with what we're doing. All right. Perfect. Well, Brandon, thanks so much for your time today. It was really helpful. Man, I enjoyed it. This was a lot of fun, man. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Entree Nito. We'd like to invite you to visit us on the web at entrenito.com. And here's some of the neato things you can expect when you get there. As a token of our appreciation for tuning in, you can download a free audiobook. And that's thanks to our friends at Audible. You can purchase your very own super official, super comfy, and super trendy Neato t-shirt. Looking to take your life and business to the next level? You can sign up for a free coaching call. Have a question or comment for us? You can click contact and connect with us. All of this and more is waiting for you at entrenito.com. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to our show and stay current on all the amazing interviews with our Neato guests. Now take what you've learned and apply it and start living your Neato life now.